If you would have had the luck, skill, or good fortune to invest $10,000 in Tesla on its IPO, today that $10,000 would be worth $1,697,187.43. That is an incredible 51.91% annualized rate of return. However, there's a lot more to the story. This would have been a very difficult thing to do because in the long run, earnings determine market price. And there was a period of time... And I'll just measure here from March of 2014, June of 2019, and you will see for all those years, you would have made literally no money investing in Tesla. So it would have been very, very difficult to have the courage and the persistence to hold on to that stock all this time. It wasn't until the most recent years that the price paid off. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of Fast Graphs, the fundamentals analyzer software tool, aka Mr. Valuation. And once again, I want to welcome you to our Fast Graph videos. We're going to cover Tesla today, a very highly requested stock I was asked to cover. And Tesla is really an interesting story. As I mentioned in the intro, you know, a $10,000 investment would have grown to an extraordinary amount of money. But there's a lot more to the story, as I said. First of all, when you look at Tesla, if I take price off of the graph here and look at the company's earnings per share since it first went public, you can see that they lost money for the first two years. Then they made a little bit of money, and then they lost money again for several more years. And then when you put the stock price on the graph, you see that there was an extended period of time where the stock price flatlined. Now, it flatlined also in the very beginning, The you know, where it went for many years where, you know, it didn't really do very much or a year and a half or so. Then we went through this long extended period and then all this growth and all this volatility. Tesla has one of the highest betas of any stock you can look at. I think the last I saw was something like, you know, two point something or other. In other words, it is twice as volatile as the overall market. And you can see that in the stock price. But the stock run has been incredible. And, and the stock price also was significantly overvalued based on these earnings forecasts. However, if you shorten the time frame to a shorter time frame, you can actually see a period of time where Tesla's earnings grew at over 400%. But I want you to be really aware of what you're looking at here. There was this time where the growth of Tesla's earnings was like astronomical. Okay, and you notice we don't even calculate it here. It's not, you know, there was 37,000% growth because, you know, which obviously impacted this 400% number. So you've got to come up with a reasonable growth rate of Tesla. And I'll show you a way to do that. You really can't hardly do it with earnings because these numbers are just too astounding. The point is that Tesla was overvalued for a significant amount of time. It was also very volatile. You know, it got to a peak in 2020 and then, you know, had a big drop. And of course, it, it had a drop during COVID, which was a pretty big drop. And then it rallied again, became over a trillion dollar market cap, which is now only a $600 market cap. So I think one thing I want to point out here is that Tesla has, you know, in the last year or so has fallen. Or it's been pretty much cut in half. It's dropped about 47% since November of 2021. Okay, just a little over a year. And yet there was also a lot of volatility in between that. But there's a lot of different ways to look at Tesla and how you evaluate that. And you got to remember that Tesla is considered an automobile manufacturer by its GIX code. But obviously, Tesla is far more than that. They're involved in solar panels and all kinds of other energy, SpaceX. You know, and of course, the Elon Musk is the founder of the company, where exactly he's not officially the founder, but he's certainly the leader of the company. And the point is, he's also, you know, one of the reasons why the stock has done so well, but he's also one of the biggest risks for the company. And I'll cover more of that a little bit later. But I want to look at Tesla from a, several different angles here, other than just earnings, because it's been very difficult for this company to generate any earnings, as I've shown. So if we look at operating cash flow, the cash flow numbers are slightly better, but they were still pretty rough. The, the company had trouble generating any cash. But if I look at EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, we once again see some pretty, you know, pretty interesting growth. But it was 
very difficult. The one positive area that this company really did generate would be sales growth. Their sales growth was positive, you know, right from the get go, and it grew at over 50% a year historically. And that sales growth is really what attracted people to the stock. But once again, people failed to realize that stock prices ultimately track the operating results of the business, but they also get disconnected from time to time. So when we put price in here, we can see that there was a period of time where the, you know, the price, as I mentioned, just, you know, languished because people were, I guess, skeptical. And then all of a sudden the stock price rose dramatically. If you look at the company from 2019, and I'm going to try to hit this, well, it's close enough to the peak. You can see that it had a 309% you know, annualized rate of return, $10,000 would have grown to $300,000 over that time frame. And again, that's a th right under a 3,000% rate of return in just a couple of years. And it was a very hot stock. And you had people like Kathy Woods, who was, you know, touting the stock and making all this money. And for good reason, the company was growing like a weed. But the stock was overvalued by almost any metric that you can look at. And now it has come down to where the stock, if I'm looking at it from a forecasting perspective, this may be the time now to be buying Tesla if you're looking at price to sales. But keep in mind, the normal price to sales ratio for this company has been over 10. And that is extraordinarily high as companies go. If you're looking at this from other metrics, again, such as earnings, which the company is starting to generate, I think you're looking at a stock with a 25, you know, percent growth potential going forward. Long-term growth is forecast as high as 39 percent, but you still got the stock trading at a, almost a 74 PE. So it is still expensive by those standards, but because it's growing so fast, you could actually generate a very strong rate of return. But once again, I want to remind you about the historical realities of this stock. You know, how many investors, if you can honestly ask yourself, go to your, you know, consciousness and ask yourself, could you have held on to this stock for all these years, making no money at all before you got this massive payout? And that's, again, what you might be faced with again here. You know, there could be times where the stock gets really sketchy. And, you know, there are analysts that talk about this company and what they really say that, the, you know, you know, the company's potential is really tied in to a great extent to its leader, Elon Musk, as we all know. And, you know, optimists will say, according to research I've read, that Elon Musk was a reason for Tesla's amazing performance since its IPO in 2010, and that he was a visionary who brought four electric vehicle models into production and helped then diversify Tesla into an energy storage and solar panel installation. However, this particular analyst goes on to say, I believe this perceived upside catalyst to be the biggest risk to Tesla. Over time, Elon Musk has become a legal, financial, and operating risk to his company that can't be overlooked any longer. From his potentially distracting takeover of Twitter to his questionable teats that seem to draw the ire of the SEC from time to time, he has proved to be a significant liability. So, you know, is he a liability or an asset? That's really up to you, I think, to decide. But this analyst goes on to say what's arguably even more concerning has been their inability to meet or exceed Elon Musk's forecast. Though Musk regularly touts the upcoming release of new electric vehicles or innovations, virtually every planned release gets pushed back, sometimes indefinitely. So there is a risk, especially with a high multiple. That's a big problem, the analyst goes on to say, when a sizable portion of Tesla's valuation is based on these innovations becoming reality. In other words, that future growth that we showed a minute ago has got to be what you're looking at. And they say the other major issue with Tesla, which is my major issue, I might add, is its valuation. Whereas auto stocks are typically valued at a single-digit forward-priced earnings multiple, Investors are paying 54 times Wall Street's consensus earnings for the upcoming year to own Tesla. That's a very, very high multiple. You know, the blended P.E. as calculated by FastGraphs is 58.75. So and another thing they point out is not only is Tesla's business every bit as cyclical as a traditional automaker, and you can see that by looking at this graph here, you know, and if I take the price off the graph, It'll become a little more vivid. You can see the cyclicality, especially if I scroll away from these years. You can see the company has had many, many years of losses 
you know, sprinkled in a couple of years of profitability. This has not been a consistent performer, okay? But they say, as an example, the company is also being chipped away by new and legacy companies. And they go on to say, this analyst goes on to say, as an example, a relatively new NEO introduced two electric vehicle sedans, the ET7 and ET5, that can handily outpace Tesla's flagship sedans, Model 3 and Model 6, in range with the top available battery pack upgrade. The luster that made Tesla a game changer, he goes on to say, looks to be wearing off. So Tesla is facing a lot of competition. But with all that said, and everything you're looking at here, this still becomes a very volatile stock. I still believe Tesla is overvalued, and I do believe that there is some risks potentially coming. I think, you know, discussions of the you know, talk with Twitter and the, you know, being forced to pay the 40 plus billion dollars to buy the company, et cetera. And, you know, other issues, the, you know, the, the production delays, et cetera, are things that investors need to worry about. So Tesla looks still overvalued based on every normal metric that you would look at with the potential of looking at it from a standpoint of things like EBITDA. The forecast for EBITDA you know, is expected to grow at 26% a year, and that might make Tesla look pretty reasonable. Their operating cash flow forecasts are also high, again, making Tesla look, you know, reasonable. The where Tesla doesn't look reasonable, just to be clear, is when you look at operating earnings based on future growth of operating earnings and a PE of 55. But then when you finally go to sales, Tesla again looks cheap. So, Obviously, I think if there was ever a time to buy Tesla in the last couple of years, it would be now since the valuation has got below its normal price to sales. But you still have to understand that you're speculating here. The company does have only a double B plus credit rating. You know, it obviously is very volatile. You can see that by the price action here. It has, you know, really a controversial leader, I guess we could say, although I think he's a brilliant man and he's done some incredible incredible things in the world. And, you know, he's been shortchanged many times, but he's come through here recently. But I do think the stock got massively ahead of itself. I do think the price now is maybe more attractive from a fundamental perspective than it's been in a long time, because what you have is you finally got some earnings. So now I want to show you something that I want you to understand how to use this tool. If I go to adjusted operating earnings and I shorten the time frame, you know, I don't get a growth rate because I've got negative numbers here. So if I shorten the time frame anymore, all of a sudden, if I go to five years, which, by the way, gives me th almost three years of history, two years and three quarters of history, and then two years and a quarter of forecast data on this graph, I've got this potential growth rate of over 400 percent. But you got to understand that that number is basically affected by this 37,000% increase in earnings that the company generated in 2020. So if I take that one year off, now the growth rate is still a massively high 74%. But now when I look forward, and you're always investing in the future, I've only got 25 or 26% growth forecast for the next two and a quarter years. And long term, I've got a 39% forecast. Now I'm going to check other estimate companies here. We're going to go into Yahoo, and Yahoo is saying 55%, 54.98% growth. So if I go to the custom calculator and I put in, we'll just round it up to 55% growth according to Yahoo, once again, I get a different perspective. The stock would still be expensive today, but due to the power of compounding, if it was to grow that fast, you could average over 30% a year compounded. So I think when it all is added up, you've got to look at this stock as a speculation, as a very high growth potential speculation, but there are a lot of things that could actually go wrong with the stock. Looking at the company, you know, recently, I do want to point out, and you can always see that with Fastgrass if you click on the splits here, they did split their stock three for one in 22, and uh, they split it five for one in 2020. So once it was going through this massive growth period, they did have a couple of stock splits to keep the price, you know, in a viable range. But again, you know, a lot of people criticize me for you know, looking at history too much, but I think you can learn so much from history. You know, there's all the hype and hysteria about Tesla, especially in the last couple of years. But there was a very long period of time where Tesla was a very, very poor investment for anybody that held it. So this idea of buying the stock, you know, 
on its initial IPO and then getting these unbelievable, you know, 50% plus annualized rates of return, those numbers are great looking in hindsight, but I believe there are very few people that would have had the patience to hold the stock for all these years when it literally did nothing. And that's something you got to take into consideration. Buy and hold worked out very, very well for Tesla shareholders, and that's despite the stock being cut in half this year. Imagine what your return would have been, you know, if you'd have bought it close to its IPO price and then held it, you know, close to the peak off, you'd have turned 10,000 into over 2.3 million and even higher than that if you go all the way to the top here where the stock, you know, got, you know, dramatically uh, priced. So it's a great story stock. It's had just unbelievable, you know, results over time, but... It's been only in recent times that the stock has really paid off, and it's been very, very volatile. This is a classic picture of a roller coaster ride in the stock market. Anyway, this is a highly requested stock, and I did want you to see some of the information. I do want to very quickly go into the financials of the company, and I do want to look at the fiscal fitness here because, again, I think you learn a lot by looking at these things. You can see that they had negative free cash flow to the dividend, which they don't pay a dividend, but negative free cash flow for all these years. Cash flow didn't start growing until the last couple of years. Their operating cash flow growth has been negative for many years. Now it's it's grown, you know, for the last three or four years, it's grown at over 60%. So it has been growing very fast recently. If I look at share buybacks, this company has essentially been issuing shares. And I think that's really been smart because they've been certainly selling shares in the open market at very, very high values. If I was an owner of Tesla, I'd have been wanting to sell the stock at those areas. You know, they're operating cash flow greater than net income has only been, again, the last several years. Their sales revenue, as I mentioned earlier, has been one of those really bright spots for the company. They've just always increased their sales. Their net income has been spotty, negative in many years. Their debt to equity is very good. You know, they have very low debt relative to the size they are. From a standpoint of margins, they've, you know, maintained pretty good operating margin or gross margins and net margins relative to the industry, especially in recent years. Their asset turnover to sales has been within industry norms and standards. Their return on assets has just the last couple of years become better than industry standard. I think that's obviously promising. The return on equity, again, has just in the last couple of years become higher. It's been good at around 20% for 2021. And then the return on invested capital has also been very good these last couple of years. So this is really a kind of an enigma company, if you will. You know, over the long run, the company's done extremely well that's clear. But, you know, when you look at it from a standpoint of, you know, its historical graph and you look at it from a standpoint of things like earnings and cash flows, it's been very, very spotty. If you're a, if you're a subscriber to Fastgrass, I do want to point out, if you're trying to look at this stock because of the wacky numbers here that I showed you, the 37,000% increase and so on, the normal price to earnings ratio is really irrelevant for this company. You got to take it off so you can get a clearer picture and you also want to use a slider here because the slider gives you some insights into, you know, how many years this company actually lost money. It only made money a couple of years, you know, prior to 2018. And again, you can see this period of time where the stock languished, you know, pretty much the first couple of years. Then it had a very large rise. And then once again, we went through this period of time where the stock you know, flatlined for a long period of time here, as I showed, you know, earlier. So this has not been an easy stock to own. It's been a very profitable one for the shareholder who is, you know, a buy and hold investor. But again, not very many of us would have had the fortitude to do that. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival, aka Mr. Valuation. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was requested. Um, so I took a look. I don't own Tesla. Um, I have a great deal of respect for the company, but I've always felt the valuation has been too high, and I still think the valuation is high. But, you know, because the company has such high growth potential, if you literally were a buy and hold investor, you could probably do well with the company. But I think you could expect some, you know, roller coaster rides in the middle, you know, where the, where you were, 
you know, looking at some bad years and some good years along the way. I think you need to be, you know, have your eyes wide open if you're an investor in, in Tesla. Anyway, if you like this video, give me a like, ring the bell, subscribe to the channel. And I think you can see by even looking at a company like Tesla, how valuable fast graphs are. Take a look at our subscription. And, you know, if you own stocks, I can't imagine you not having fast graphs as one of your research tools. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again real soon.